This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. Welcome back to the X-Zone, everyone. This is the X-Zone Broadcast Network and the Talkstar Radio Network. Our email address is X-Zone at XZoneRadioTV.com. On MSN Messenger, you can always chat with us here in our studios in Hamilton, night or day, by typing in the MSN address, TV at Hotmail.com, and our website, www.XZoneRadioTV.com. X-Zone Nation, this hour, we're going to be talking about the Almanac of the Infamous... The Incredible and the Ignored. Now, the Almanac of the Infamous, the Incredible and the Ignored, which is published by Weezer uh, Books, came out in October of last year, is a fact collector's dream directory of histories, mysteries, and unexplained events, rich with original illustrations throughout. An outstanding trivia and reference book for any lover of the unusual lure. Each date has one or more historical events, a quote, an illustration, And a secret power. Shh, let's not tell anybody it's a secret power. (laughs) Topics include crystal skull, UFO encounters, and other enigmas of nature, uncanny experiments in science, coincidence, the unsolved, and the downright peculiar. The almanac of the infamous, the incredible, and the ignored. 365 days of outlandish events, mind-boggling mysteries, and stranger-than-fiction stories meticulously researched and delightfully illustrated. My guest this hour is the author. Juanita Rose Violini has been fascinated by mysteries large and small all of her life. She has run Masterpiece Mysteries and MysteryFactory.com for 20 years, writing, directing, and producing murder mystery events and downloadable parties. She has written, directed, and produced more than two dozen murder mystery plays and is a member of Crime Watchers of Canada. You can visit her website at www.incrediblealmanac.com. And Juanita, welcome back to the X-Zone. Great having you here with us. And how is how has the book been going? It's a great book. Thank you. It's been going great. I have got only positive feedback on it. So that's really super, and I am... Um, I'm actually starting to get feedback that people are getting from the book what I want people to get from the book, which is a sense of hope and excitement that anything is possible. Tell, tell our listeners why you wrote the book. Well, it, there's a bunch of different threads that kind of came together. To start with, it was a book that I wanted to read. And when I started writing the book, it wasn't exactly like the finished product looks now, but I wanted to read a book that would tell me, actually, that I was special. And I couldn't find that book anywhere. And so, rather than think I wasn't special, I thought, I'll write that book. Because I think everyone has got something really unique and wonderful about them. And so I wanted there to be a book in the world that could let people know that life was wonderful and they didn't even have to do anything. It just is wonderful. So that was part of why I was writing the book. I also really thought that it's a good idea for people to to have questions about life. Mm-hmm. And I think all the stories in this book really bring into questioning whatever paradigms we might have and hopefully shake them a little bit loose. And so we can wonder what is true and what is real and and look for our own answers rather than just the answers that we're told. So, and I wanted a book, you know, to encourage people to be adventurers in life and to really start participating because I think that there's too many of us that wake up in the morning and it's just kind of like ho-hum and I just think it's wonderful to wake up in the morning, bolt out of bed and be excited about what the day has. 
Great way to think, great way to live, and I couldn't agree with you more. Juanita, please stand by. You and I have to take a commercial break. We'll be back in two minutes. Exo right. Nation, my guest this hour is Juanita Rose Violini. We're going to be talking about her book, Almanac of the Infamous, The Incredible, and The Ignored. Her website is www.incrediblealmanac.com. This is the Exxon on the Exxon Broadcast Network and the Talkstar Radio Network. You can always send an email, exxon at exxonradiotv.com, on MSN Messenger, TV at hotmail.com, and our website, www.exxonradiotv.com. Juanita and I will return in two minutes after this break as we continue from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the Exxon Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the Exxon Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere. 24-7-365. Peter Rose Violini is my special guest. She's the author of Almanac of the Infamous. The Incredible and The Ignored. Sounds like uh, the autobiography of my life. Um, t- tell me, what interests you about real-life mysteries? Well, I really like how they shake things up. And uh, I think a lot of real-life life mysteries have been ignored for far too long. And I think it's uh, useful to use them to help us get out of the rut that we get into. So real-life mysteries, they just kind of pull the rug out from under you, and that's what I like about them. What are some of your favorite lifetime mysteries? Oh, that's tough. Um, Oh, come on. That's an easy one for a person like you who wrote a book with 365 different ones. Come on. I know. It's like, (laughs) this is my favorite. No, no, this is my favorite. No, wait, I forgot. This one's my favorite. There's so many. Actually, I'm right now. I'm kind of leaning towards the Philadelphia experiment Ooh. because, in my previous research, somehow or other, I did not come across. Now, I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce it correctly. The Montauk Project. Project Montauk. Now, have you heard of that? I sure have. Well, it's new to me, and I was like, whoa, how did I miss this last time? Because my understanding of it is that uh, tied up with the Philadelphia experiment, which we, I think we talked about before, about how in the World War II, the U.S. military was experimenting with radar invisibility mm-hmm. and actually turned a ship invisible and it even teleported to a different location and then back again. Now, the research I'm coming across now is talking about when the ship teleported, I think it was to Norfolk, I'm not positive, Mm -hmm. that a couple of guys on board decided it was too weird, and they were going to jump ship and jump into the water. When they jumped ship, though, they didn't land in the water, they landed in the future, And I'm just like, this is cool. And everything that we're learning now about quantum physics Mm -hmm. and uh, time not necessarily being linear, it's like, why not? And it's interesting also, the more research I do, I get a really uh, large overview of things. And so... There is, in the mystery journals, people who mysteriously appear out of nowhere. You know, besides disappearing, people appear. Uh, Kasper Hauser being one of the more well-known ones, a 16-year-old boy who showed up in Germany. 
he just walked into the town square one day, and then there were children in uh, England in, in mm-hmm. wool pit. Now, they were green, so yeah. I'm not quite sure how that works. In, they were Irish. But, yeah. So it's just fascinating to me, and right now I'm just uh, coming across information about the Montauk Project. And then, you know, the whole movie that's come out about men who stare at goats mm-hmm. and all the um, information that's starting to come out about things that we don't know what's been going on. So right now, I guess the Philadelphia experiment is one of my favorites. Do you think with the, with the knowledge that quantum physics is now bringing to the scientific community, that we are going to be finding that what we thought at one time were were great mysteries are actually just everyday common occurrences in the great time-space continuum? I think that may be so, and I believe that uh, Arthur C. Clarke had a quote somewhere along those lines about magic is just um, technology that we haven't discovered yet. And I do believe it will become a lot more common. And it's pretty exciting, too, I think. Now, I really like, um, yeah, I just, sometimes there's just such a great amount of information available that my mind just like zips around and has a hard time setting on one thing or another. But uh, the time slips, I really think that there'll be a lot more focus on that. Do you remember the TV show that was on a couple of years ago, Sliders, where the kids actually slid from one ep- one parallel existence to the next? i got to confess, Rob, I have not watched TV in probably 35 years. So you haven't watched TV since you were two years old? <laughs> yes, that's right. <laughs> wow. Well, if I was 37, that would be true. But uh, that's that's the kind of time slip that, that works well, actually. <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the other mysteries that you discuss in your in your book in your almanac, the almanac of the infamous, the incredible, and the ignored? Well, there's such a variety of types. For instance, there's uh, the mysteries of rat kings. Now, so this isn't so much a paranormal mystery, though maybe, but rat kings are groups of rats that have their tails all tied together. Mm. And there are reports of these. There's some in the 1700s, some in the 1800s. Uh, I can tell you one that took place in the mid-1700s in Germany. 18 live rats with their tails tied together fell from between two stones beneath the cogwheels of a mill. And so uh, these rodents, nobody knows how they live, how they get around, how their tails got tied together, and and how they survive, because how do they eat? They're, they're, you don't ever see, like, masses of 18 rats with their t- tails tied together walking around. So that's one of the kind of interesting biological mysteries in here. Um, I have one about horses who can talk. Well, not talk. They can count, and they can spell, so they can talk, because uh, one fellow put out, uh, like, an alphabet board and fixed it up so that uh, when the horse is tapped on a particular pedal or a particular number of times, they could spell out sentences and answer questions. So there's the whole animal intelligence um, that really, we haven't really explored much at all communication between the species, except for possibly the dolphins. Um, Another one of my favorite mysteries is the treasure at Glozo. Now, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it right, but this was over in France. This took place in 1925 uh, in a field a 17-year-old boy and his grandfather saw a cow drop out of the field like it was going along and just disappeared. And they had discovered that this cow had fallen into a hole in the ground. So they pulled the cow out, 
And then the 17-year-old, he goes in there, and he finds himself in a cavern, an artificial cavern. It's got bricks around it on the inside that have been, like, glazed over as if it was inside some kind of gigantic kiln. And down there, there someone has collected a huge array of artifacts. There's stones and brick shelves that filled the cavities, and there are, like, statues of ancient deities and engraved bones and antlers and clay tablets with a language on it that we still haven't deciphered today. So it was a huge controversy when they found these, uh, this cache of treasures about whether it was a hoax or whether it was real. And like many controversies, every couple of years there's new evidence that comes out that says, yes, this is real, no, this is not real. But the last I heard in the 70s, they had a new technology called thermoluminescence, which dated the artifacts, some of them from as early as 100 B.C. The latest ones were from the 1600s, but who collected them together or why they were collected together and placed in this cavern under the field is a mystery. Wow. So I really like that, yeah. You know, it amazes me, the treasure that is around the world that's been lost and found. And some days I can't believe we're not all just, like, out looking for treasure or experimenting to see if we can have X-ray vision yeah. or some exciting thing like that. Uh, I really also have quite a few mysteries in here about dreams now. Did we talk about Krakatoa? I can't remember. No, we didn't. What we talked about. Well, now this is a cool mystery because this is about a reporter in Boston who went to sleep one night and had a dream. Mm -hmm. And in his dream, the uh, um, he dreamt that this volcano was blowing up. And it was like a very horrific dream. And he woke up in a sweat. He'd fallen asleep in his office, and he wrote down all the details of this island, where it was, and, you know, the tragedy that was occurring there. And he wrote important over the top of his notes. So from this, he uh, then went home to sleep. So the editor gets in in the morning, and he sees this piece of paper on the desk with important scribbled across the top, and he thinks it's a wire that has come in. So what actually has happened, they ran the story as if oh, it were gosh. true, found out it was a dream, tried to cancel it, and then found out it was true. So that's, like, that amazes me that he, he dreamt it as it was happening. All right, stand by, Juanita. You and I have to take a break. Fascinating stories from a fascinating lady, Exo Nation. The name of Juanita's book is entitled Almanac of the Infamous, the Incredible, and the Ignored. And it's published by our good friends at Red Wheel Weezer Canary Book Publishers. If you'd like to find out more about Juanita, here's uh, two websites IncredibleAlmanac.com. That's www.IncredibleAlmanac.com. And you can also uh, track Juanita down at www.mysteryfactory.com. More mysteries, more strange, more infamous, more incredible, and, yup, the ignored. When I return from this commercial break with the news, right here in the X-Zone from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada. Don't go away. We'll be right back after this news break. This is the Exxon Broadcast Network, broadcasting worldwide on broadcast affiliates and satellite program providers, including CNN Broadcast Network, Sirius Satellite Network, Star Media, Good News Radio Network, Angel Broadcast Network, Wiki Broadcast Network, and WPBN-TV. For more information on the X-Zone Broadcast Network, visit us at www.xzbn.net. We're talking about the Almanac of the Infamous, the Incredible, and the Ignored by our guest this hour, Juanita Rose Viallini. 
And her website is www.incrediblealmanac.com. Juanita, um, why did you choose to include quotes in your book? Quotes? I really find that there's a lot of wisdom in quotes, and so I've included them because... You know, and back to why I wrote the book, is to connect with the mystery. So I think that mystery lives inside of us as well as outside of us, and that quotes are a good bridge between the mystery, the inner and outer mystery. And uh, I find them very uplifting, actually, the quotes, and, and that's what, one of my aims for the book is to uplift people. Now, each day has a secret power. Now, what are they about? Well, this is another part of the book that I really wanted to read was uh, books are good as far as they go, but I really want to be able to participate in the mystery as well, Mm -hmm. not just read about it that happened long ago and far away and it was nice for them back there, (laughs) but I want to be able to access mystery any time. And so the secret powers I found as a way to kind of put attention on the mystery that is available and make it accessible to anyone. Can you share some of the quotes with us as well as some of the secret power? Okay. Well, now I was thinking as the the song Daydream Believer was Mm -hmm. playing there, there's a really great story in the book about a woman who has a dream. This is in... uh, during World War One, and she dreams that her fiancé, who is a soldier, is trapped in darkness by rubble, and she sees him, like, groping and trying to get out of this cave-in. And in her dream, then, she kind of rises up above the cave-in, and she sees a castle on a hilltop. She goes to people saying that her fiancé is trapped, and they just ignore her. She ends up scouring the countryside looking for him, eventually does find the castle and free him. So the quote from um, on this day is a quote from Terry Pratchett. Quote, the secret is not to dream, she whispered. The secret is to wake up. Waking up is harder. And there's also a quote on this page by Lewis Carroll. He was part of my dream, of course but then I was part of his dream, too. The secret power for the day is using dreams to wake up from the dream and uh, to optimize, because I also like to give little exercises or pointers of how to make use of the secret power. To optimize is to know that your entire life is a dream, but at the same time, it's very real. So I could just talk forever about this kind of thing. Wow. <laughs> T- tell, tell me, what was, the most surpri- so like, what was the most surprising thing that you learned? The most surprising thing that I learned? I guess that there were documented cases of people dematerializing, like not just disappearing, but mm-hmm. in front of witnesses fading away. Now that, to me was um, very surprising to find out about that. And, you know, there's another thing I've learned. I am actually have gotten a contract for a second book, so now I'm looking more in-depth research at other mysteries. And I was very surprised to come across only one reference ever of someone who saw another person in a mirror. Like, they looked in a mirror, Mm -hmm. and they saw basically Alice, looking back out from the mirror. So I started to ask, you know, my friends and on Facebook and whatnot, have you ever seen anyone looking out of a mirror at you? And, you know, a lot of women my age are joking around. They say, oh, yeah, I see my mother looking out because we grow up to look like our mothers. But uh, this is actually something I would love to know more about if people have this experience of seeing, you know, other people who are not them staring back out of the mirror. That was a surprise for me. That would be shocking to look into the mirror and see somebody else looking back at you. And I, I imagine it would be the same way the other way around for the other person. I, I, is it possible that 
two dimensions actually meet at that point and that there's more to life than synchronicities? I would think that there is something there and the same as, as shadows. I'm, I think shadows and mirrors would have some commonality there that does make them portals to, I don't know, dimensions leaking into each other. But a shadow is simply the blockage of light. How can that be a porthole into another dimension? I don't know that a shadow is simply the blockage of light. I mean, maybe it is, but then what's blocking the light? And where does that come from? Because it's not necessarily shadows. You know, it's interesting, too. I sometimes think about uh, different children's stories, and I believe that in many children's stories mm -hmm. there are metaphysical secrets that the writer has put in there. And so speaking of shadows, then we have Peter Pan, whose shadow ran away from him, and he tried to catch it. So I think there is more to shadows and mirrors than we first suppose. But Peter Pan was a fictional character. He was a cartoon. You know, Fred... Well, Pan Disney made him into a cartoon. <laughs> right, but... I don't know, but, well... But don't... Is, does, isn't there a time when we have to separate fantasy from reality and accept fantasy for what it is? Well, this is, I think everyone has to decide for themselves what is fantasy, mm -hmm. you know, and what is, because I think it's a very narrow line, like they say, between genius and insanity. I think as long as a person can remain functional, they can experiment with different energies that might give them experiences that people who don't think about or experiment with energies would not believe. Do you know what I'm saying? Give me an example of what you just said. Okay, well now, here's a story I've recently come across. Now, it's a story I want to talk about. Um... This was written by a fellow who went, I think, an anthropologist into the jungle in the 40s. Mm -hmm. And he was documenting his experiences with different uh, shaman. And there was a rival between a female shaman and someone in another tribe. And he saw her set his building on fire with her eyes. So that kind of thing. I think if a person is uh, works on themselves, I think, first of all, we have to get ourselves in shape. We have to make sure that we are capable of handling a lot of energy. And just to, to hop around a little bit here, the spontaneous human combustion, I think, is examples of uh, powerful energy that we all have inside of us that got away on a person, that they couldn't handle it. But I think that if you can handle it, then you are able to maybe manipulate physical reality in a way that most people would not think is possible. And to go back to physics again, physicists say that solid objects are composed mostly of air. That's right. So that being true, then, why would you not be able to manipulate it if you had the tools, the discipline, and the knowledge to do so? Okay. Point taken. Well done. Tell me, what makes your book different from all the others? Thank you. Sorry, say again? I, I said, what makes your book different from all the others that are out there that have basic trivia in it? Well, the quotes and the secret powers to start off with uh, make it quite different. Uh, many books are informative and entertaining. I'm really hoping, and it seems to be, that my book is useful as well. 
because uh, for something to be useful, I think, is the highest compliment almost and the greatest aim. And so my book takes mystery and magic and gives a little bit of a how-to instructional type manual for people who are looking for more than just entertainment. Uh, it gives a experience for us to relate to our world differently, to relate to the mysteries differently. Uh, also in my book, I tried just to lay down the facts and not have any um, guesses about how it could happen. Um, just the minimum of the story. A lot of the mysteries have been boiled down to just these small 300 word nuggets when there's thousands or tens of thousands of words on them. So I'm hoping my book is different enough that will will inspire people to do some investigating and research on their own. Um, yeah, I just like how I decided not to try and explain or make any connections with the mysteries, just to put it out there for people to take it as they like. Tell me, how can Almanac of the Infamous, the Incredible, and the Ignored affect people's lives? Well, first of all, for me, it's affected my life greatly writing it. Mm -hmm. And so that was wonderful. It totally turned my life around um, from really not being much interested in getting up in the morning to being really excited to get out and about. It changed so many aspects of my life that even if nothing else had happened, that alone would have been worth writing the book. But it's been out long enough now that I'm starting to get feedback from people that they really get a lift from it and a lot of enjoyment. Um, I had one woman say to me the other day that there were a lot of things that had happened in her life that she had dismissed or discounted somehow. Mm -hmm. And that after reading my book, she understood that it was useful for her to start trusting her intuition more. So I love it when I hear stories about how something that I've written has helped empower people just in and with themselves. Have you always been interested in the unknown, the strange, the weird, and the bizarre? Yes. <laughs> Short answer, yes, I always have. I've, uh... <laughs> it's, uh, definitely has set me apart, and, um, uh, but I think my life has been very, uh, intriguing in many ways. Mm -hmm. Um, it's just I just like that bit of spark. You know, someone has said to me about they really were enjoying the movie Avatar. Yeah, I mean, I haven't good. seen it in 3D, but it's apparently quite fabulous. But I also heard that there had to be a support group for people who were so depressed afterwards that the real life wasn't like that. No, and I think that if we open up our eyes a bit more, it is yeah. like that. Wow, geez, I've never heard of people requiring a support group after seeing Avatar. I've, I've heard nothing but great things. In fact, I, I've seen it three times. I love it. James Cameron, way to go. Yeah, it's excellent. But I don't think it's that far off from the life we could be living. Mm. You know, life is like that, and we just need the eyes to see it. Our attention is just not on the right things to be aware that it's true. It's a true story. There, fantasy and reality, I don't know. Does art imitate life? Does life imitate art? There's all these chatty questions. You and I have to take our final break, Juanita. Please stand by. Great having you with us, and congratulations on a super book. I thoroughly enjoy reading my book that you were kind enough to send me, and it is in our in our Exxon library here, and it has been read by many people. They all love it. Exxon Nation, get your very own copy of Juanita's book. It's entitled Almanac of the Infamous, the Incredible, and the Ignored. It's available online everywhere and fine bookstores. And if your bookstore does not have it, say, hey, listen, the Almanac of the Infamous, the Incredible, and the Ignored by Juanita Rose Violini. Please get it in. I'd like it, and I'm sure other people would as well. Her website is 
incrediblealmanac.com. Now, we'll be back on the other side of this commercial break as we do our show's wrap-up for tonight here in the Exxon, live from our studios in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, on the all-new Exxon Broadcast Network and the Talkstar Radio Network. Did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or Wi-Fi, you can still listen to the x Radio Show with Rob McConnell, The Science of Magic with Gwilda Wiaka, X-1, Dimension X, Space Patrol, and every minute of the x Broadcast Network by calling 213-401-0080, courtesy of Audio Now. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. It saves your data plan and it's free if you have unlimited minutes. Call 213-401-0080 to listen on any phone, anytime, anywhere. Remember 213-401-0080 for the best of the paranormal, parapsychology, and sci-fi radio programming anywhere, 24-7-365. And welcome back, everyone. I'd like to take this opportunity of thanking all our guests tonight. Bradley Lockerman and I discussed the John Searle story in hour number one. Dr. David Gruder and I discussed the implications of paranormal TV on children. Stephen Myers and I discussed the Great Pyramid of Egypt. And Juanita Rose Violini, our special guest this hour, we're talking about her great book. In fact, like I said, we've got a copy here in the X Zone and we just love it. Almanac of the Infamous, the Incredible, and the Ignored. And I'd like to thank our good friends at Red Wheel for helping make this interview possible tonight. Before we get back to Juanita, yesterday we had Elizabeth Joyce on the show. And I asked her a question about President uh, Bill Clinton. And she said, well, I don't know. I think he's going to be he's going to be getting ill or he's going to be ill. And, you know, there's going to be something happening in June Well, a CNN flash just came across our desk about a half hour ago where President uh, Bill Clinton has been rushed to hospital in New York City. How she does it, I don't know, but there you go. Another prediction made by Elizabeth Joyce here on the X-Zone that has come to fruition. Juanita, I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight. Um, But before you go, tell us a little bit about your mystery factory. Ah, Mystery Factory. I did corporate murder mystery entertainment for 20 years. So from that, for a while I wrote a new script each time, but uh, I ended up coming up with three mysteries to be performed by six actors. It doesn't need to be professional actors, but outgoing people. And there's, so there's scripts that can be performed between, oh, 50 and 200 people. Mm-hmm. We also have instructions for children's parties online available for download and i'm currently working on uh, house parties that people can put on as well wow well congratulations on all the great work you're doing i'm so happy to hear that you're going to be writing another book you do a great job it's easy to read it's fun it's entertaining and it's educational the three basic ingredients that any book should have and you keep on nailing it right to the t tell our listeners how they can find out more about you and where they can get your book i have two websites incrediblealmanac.com um if you're on facebook i have a facebook fan page for the incredible almanac we have mystery factory and my book is available at amazon uh, online, Barnes and Nobles, Chapter Indigo, all the chain bookstores and all bookstores everywhere. They can get my book everywhere, Rob. Everywhere. Juanita, thanks very much <laughs> for joining us. I, I look forward to the next time you and I meet here in the X Zone. You're a great lady, a super author, and you've done a great job. Thanks very much for being with us. Thank you, Rob. Well, that's it for tonight, everyone. Once again, I want to thank all our guests, and I want to thank you, the members of the XO Nation around the world, whether you're in Canada, the United States, Central America, the Caribbean, South America, the Pacific Rim, the Asian countries, Europe, Africa, wherever. Thank you for allowing us to be part of your day or night, no matter where you are on this great big world of ours. So until tomorrow night at 10 o'clock, when once again we cross the time-space continuum, my friends, take care of each other, love your children, and always... Keep your eyes to the sky and your heart to the light. Good night now.